you can transition once your guitar is tuned. <laughs> once your guitar is tuned, you can transition um, from the G to the C, and this will take a little bit more progression because it's not really as easy as playing the G or the shape of G and sliding it around. It's not, to me, that is simple. That is, it might get, uh, um, for someone that is just beginning, it might be a little difficult or, or maybe even painful for your fingers. Um, you know, even my fingers just playing a little bit, I have like, uh, you know, little lines that, I don't know if you can see them, but yeah, little lines on the, that's, it's just natural, it's what happens. Um, but, uh, you know, if you're not used to that, if you can't get over the fact of the, the pain you know, before music, and it's like, you gotta, you gotta just play the music and forget about it, and just, you know, if you love it, you do it, but, uh, anyhow, though, the slide is gonna be, I think, a little bit easier once you get the hang of, like, your ambidexterity and, and the chord shape itself, and you actually get it to sound out by pushing down and strumming full, you know, it's one of the other big things, too, about music is, is your strumming patterns, a good thing to do might be to practice maybe when you're home alone or, or just, you know, not necessarily trying to play music for somebody, but you're just, you're just, you know, figuring out because it's not, it's not the best sound, but you just want to kind of keep your, your strings muted or you can play them open or you can hold a chord even if you wanted and just kind of practice your strum, you know, don't even, don't, a lot of people would say don't even focus on a chord, just even play open string, work on your strum up and down, go from up and down to you know, making pauses or even just doing upstrokes, you know, and work on that until you get the, the fluidity of your wrist to a point where it's just, you know, flowing naturally. Um, and that's, that's kind of a good way to practice your strumming. The reason you don't want to use the chords again, because it kind of distracts you from really using your wrist if you're trying to learn chords as well at the same time, or even if you already know chords, it's just you're focusing on both things, so just try one at a time and then add them. Um, if you're learning strumming still. Uh, but basically, with the C and the G transfer, there is another way of playing the G. If you drop out the pinky and you move the ring finger down where the pinky was on the first string, third fret, you can play it that way as well. And to transition that easier into the C, what you would do is switch your fingers around to where it's your uh, ring finger playing the root note, the top string, and your middle finger playing the fifth string, uh, second fret. So then you would have those two doing it that way. And this kind of makes it also easier to play and go into some lead riffs if you're like sliding around on the guitar and you're like, you know, because you, you have that index finger free. So you can do a lot, a lot with that. Um, Kind of just something to keep in mind. So, again, that's going to be just transitioning from your index finger and your middle finger to your um, ring finger and your middle finger. And then you drop your pinky down where it normally goes for the G. So you still get the G sound, but it's a different hand shape. It's a different, it's a different combination. And it's a different feel for your hand also um, in the back of the guitar as you're trying to press down and uh, hold the chord and hold the guitar upright. Um, it's a completely different feel. This again though also gives up uh, freedom for your index finger to kind of so you could do you could do a lot of things you can my friend used to call that spider fingers which is kind of weird it actually Funny enough, though, focusing on that idea of spider fingers got me over my, um, what is it, uh, arachnophobia? I used to be, like, real afraid of spiders, because, like, I don't know, they just, it's the way they crawl on you and stuff, but I got over that thanks to spider fingers and, uh, midnight maneuvers, where we used to, um, crawl in these, like, big bush forests, dude, like, deep, deep wood forests with this big group of people in, like, army clothes and stuff like that. This was kind of, like, training for a little, little... Um, bivouac or whatever if you know what that is and uh we would crawl like like for hours dude in the dirt and there would be these giant banana spiders that were literally like 
they were huge, dude, and they were glow in the dark, and and they were just everywhere. They were everywhere. And after you go through something like that, you just start to realize you're like, you know what, spiders ain't that bad. They're actually kind of cool, kind of cool. Mosquitoes, mosquitoes suck, literally. So let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, the G, again in that weird sort of shape with the ring finger and middle finger transitioning from the middle finger to the index. And you can even practice that, dude, to get that transition kind of fluid. Because that's going to take time to be able to do that if you're just getting into guitar or whatever kind of strong instrument. Transitioning your fingers takes a lot of time to get the hang of, so even doing something like that isn't necessarily a bad thing. You don't want to form bad habits, obviously, so just keep that in mind and try to try to expand the way that you practice, and don't just don't just practice the same thing for. Well, I'm not gonna say don't practice the same thing for hours on end, but don't don't only practice the same thing. Practice a broad and you know a broad sense of things practice every single thing that you can think of and then look up more things and practice even more you know jam with your friends and you know go to a music store and just pick up a guitar and play with the person that's playing another guitar if he doesn't mind you know like these are these are the things that you do to improve not only yourself as as a musician or or a player of an instrument but yourself as a person as an individual just talking to people and networking and and feeling you know, yourself and learning what it is that you want to play or even do in life. Um, so it's kind of like a real big breakthrough thing, because when you talk to people about music, it's it's like a whole different conversation. It's a whole different world. It's a, it's like, I don't know, music does something to people. And and it's just it's a, a big reason why so many people would love to learn, but they feel that, I don't know, for some reason that they can't. And I think that it's it's a good idea to just pick up an instrument and try and learn it. So yeah, do it, do it, do it. Watch live on, oh sh- Yeah!